Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. Located a mere 340 light years from Earth is a planet known as KOI 5AB in the system known as KOI 5 in the constellation of Cygnus. What is unique about this planet and others in that system is the fact that it doesn't have just one, nor two, but three stars. And the people of that world have the unique right to legitimately claim that they have three suns. And joining us tonight will be astronomer Tina Cole to tell us about this unique galactic system and her new PBS program that explores this strange corner of the universe entitled My Three Sons. This interstellar documentary series... Tina Cole is not an astronomer and she does not have a program called My Three Sons. Oh, My Three Sons with an O instead of a U. Wait... I know this lovely woman. She's been on our show before. My bad. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your absent-minded host, Vincent. With me is my precocious handler, the adorable Miss Tangella. And over here is... Where again did you say he went? Oh, of course. Not over here, but who would normally be stood to my side as well is not Mr. Livingston, who was kind enough to drive all the way to San Jose to pick up my shiny new pair of Ferragama shoes, which I ordered last week. Does he know the way to San Jose? Back to my diatribe. We'll be joined by our old friend Tina Cole, who portrayed Katie Douglas on the hit TV show My Three Sons. She's also a talented singer who made numerous television appearances with her band, The Four King Cousins. I think it was a death metal band, if I remember correctly. And Tina will join us to watch The 27th Day from 1957. This is an interesting movie about five Earthlings abducted by an alien spacecraft who are then given superpowers in what appears to be a test of their humanity and self-restraint. You know, I wonder if these aliens are from the KOI-5 solar system. In any case, it looks like a fabulous film, and we think you'll all find it most amusing. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of interstellar fright, right here on Creature Features. <laughs> Stay tuned. It's time for another installment of Creature Features. Did I do that spooky? That was, uh, You could do it a little more. A little more spooky? Little, yeah. It's time for another installment of Creature Features. I have too ridiculous of a face to be spooky. No. Get, get crazy eyes. You need crazy eyes. I can't do crazy eyes. Creature oh. Features. I like the way you do it better. Can you come back every week and I'd do this for to. me? That'd be wonderful. <laughs> We've got Tina Cole with us. Hello. You know, I... I was confused at the beginning because I thought we had astronomer Tina Cole coming on the show. Another life. No. No. You know, I think you'd make a fine astronomer. Yes, why? No, because you've got a name that sounds like an astronomer. Uh, listen to it. Astronomer Tina Cole. That works. I mean, it sounds like a character in a film, right? Oh, yes. It could be a real life thing, yes. too. So, Tina Cole, you did My Three Sons. I did. I mean, you did many other things. 
But that's the one that, that puts you on the big map, it, right? It, yes, absolutely. Right, right. right. Very yeah, grateful funny. for that. Right. But you're a local girl. Very, quite, very close. You're telling me you grew up in Orinda. I did. Orinda? Well, I went to high school in Orinda. Grew right. up in, in Los Angeles, but went to high school in Orinda. And then right. I live in Sacramento. Nice. So it's still in Northern California. Right. It's not that right. far. Sacramento. How's Sacramento doing these days? Uh, we're not quite flooded. <laughs> I know this rain, you know, we I keep love hearing, it. people are going to think we're like we're being like, you know, Noah and the Ark oh, type yeah. situation. I know. We're up on a hill, so we're fine. But the, the problem is, is if it, if it, if it floods down below, everyone's going to come up to our place. And we don't have enough loose. Do you have a moat? Isn't there like a moat and you can put no, well, alligators in If it the or water something? comes up, it'll be like a giant yeah. moat, will it not? Yes. Right. That will yeah. keep them out. No, but the problem is that we don't have enough loose in this household to accommodate thousands oh, yeah. of people. They could use the moat. Oh, right. <laughs> is that what they used to do? Just That's right. <laughs> no, no, let it float in the moat. All right, so tonight <laughs> we are going to watch the 27th day. Oh, yes. Are you familiar with this one? I am. Believe it or not. This is completely new to me. Oh. I'd never heard of this film. I hadn't until you brought it up. <laughs> you know, we don't show a lot of science fiction films. I don't know why. Oh. But this is like a science fiction. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right, right. Yeah, we did show more of those. I, I think it started with me trying to get Star Wars, and they said no. <laughs> and I figured all the other science fiction, they would say no too, but no, that's, that's all right. Oh, no. Good. All right, and we're going to talk about what you've been up to as of late. Great. You're going to tell us some more stories about my three sons. Absolutely, whatever you'd like. your singing career. <laughs> She's an accomplished musician and singer. <laughs> so we're going to cover all that, but first we're going to Wonderful. start the film. Yes. All right, off we go. 27th day. Please don't go away. Thank you. How do you like it, Eve? Lovely. What is it? My impression of the coastline of Cornwall. Oh, Harry, darling, you painted the entire coastline of England. I've yet to see anything that looks like a wave. Never mind. Keep on trying. I'm going for a walk. You've absolutely no appreciation for modern art. Sugars, three. I like your style, Pete. Someday you'll be the boss of the Los Angeles Record Telegram. Thanks for the compliment. That's 20 cents. My mistake. Someday you'll be the treasurer. Keep the change. Thanks. Mr. Clark. Yeah? Who's there? My name is of no importance, Mr. Clark. But I must ask you to come with me. Thank you. 
Sultan. Come with me, Sultan. Well, I'm ready. At least I remember to take my notes with me to America. Koblenz has been honored by your invitation to the conference. Ah, the honor will be to witness the launching of the satellites. They mark the beginning of a new phase in the progress of mankind. Perhaps the greatest single step toward achieving communication between the planets. Professor, hmm? your plane to America, three o'clock? Oh, it would be difficult to get there without it, huh? <laughs> well, Professor, have a nice trip, and we'll hear from you soon, huh? Thank you, Dr. Schmidt. Goodbye. Goodbye. Professor? Professor Bechner? Did someone call me? Professor, I'm afraid you'll have to interrupt your departure for America. Interrupt? But why? I'm afraid it's not quite that simple. Ivan. Who goes there? You are in no danger, Ivan Godovsky. Halt! Brian, fire! Your gun will not help. Excuse me, aren't you Professor Klaus Beckner? But what are we doing here? Where are we? I don't know. I was writing a column in the office of the Los Angeles Record Telegram. Somebody spoke to me. Next thing I know, I woke up here. Los Angeles? I was in England. And I, my dear, was in Koblenz. But how? The how, I suspect, we may never understand. What interests me now is why. It's pretty obvious where you're from, my dear. And you, soldier. <laughs> People of Earth, permit me to explain your presence here. Each of you is hearing my words in his or her native tongue. Who are you? Well, since I'm a stranger to each of you, perhaps it would be simplest to call me the alien. Where are you from? The name of the planet I come from is unknown to you. One of many worlds in a nearby universe. Where are we now? In space. I don't believe it. If you please. Don't be frightened. You'll be sent back to Earth absolutely unharmed. Furthermore, no measurable time by earthly standards will pass while you're here. Is such a thing possible? You're traveling at almost exactly the speed of light. At such a speed, time, as you know it, does not exist. Theoretically, but in actuality. Why have we been brought here? If you'll kindly be seated, I'll try to explain. You five are here, in effect, as representatives. Not of your particular countries, but as representatives of the human race. Then you have come to Earth to establish contact. Oh, no, Professor. We are here to help you save your beautiful planet. You talk as if the Earth were about to be destroyed. That danger exists. Your entire history is one of self-destruction. You have now what you believe to be the ultimate weapon. The H-bomb. If you destroy yourselves, you also destroy the Earth. And that we cannot permit. For it is needed. 
Yeah. The universe in which my world exists is dying. Soon our sun will be going into Nova and explode. Therefore, your people need a new world. Within 35 days. Then you're going to invade us. Oh, no. No, our moral code does not permit us to invade nor to destroy any form of intelligent life. We are prepared to lend you a weapon. A weapon which will permit you to destroy yourselves without harming your planet. This weapon affects only human life. Nothing else will be harmed. It will be loaned to you for 27 of the 35 days remaining to us. If at the end of that time, midnight of the 27th day, Greenwich time, you've not used it, the weapon will automatically become harmless. You are under no compulsion to make use of the weapon. Yet you think we will. We cannot hope for disaster. We merely expect it. Say you're wrong. Say the 27 days go by and we don't use the weapons. What happens then? Your race will live. Mine will die. Who are you going to give the weapons to? The weapons, one apiece, will be given to each of you. You may, of course, turn them over to your governments. But the decision is yours. The weapons are yours to do with as you wish. I can understand your curiosity, but they're protected by a force field. Each of the boxes is tuned to the electrical impulse of its owner. Now, Professor, the one to your left is yours. Ivan Godovsky, the next is yours. Yves Wingert, the next is yours. Sutan, you too. The last is yours, Jonathan Clark. Each of you holds in your hands the power of life and death. Each box contains three capsules. They are the weapon. They surpass by many times the power of anything your race has yet created. Each of the capsules has a diameter of lethal radiation which is exactly 3,000 miles. There is then, in the combined capsules, more than enough power to wipe out all human life on your planet. To use the capsules, you remove the spindle, place the capsule down, speak loudly and clearly, the latitude and longitude in the center of the target area. The energy thus launched takes only human life, damages nothing else. It cannot be opened by ordinary means, Professor. Only your own thought waves will actuate the release mechanism. No other force on your Earth is capable of opening the box. But once it has been opened, anyone can pull the spindle, and any voice can launch them to their targets. What if we die? If any one of you is called by death, the capsules will become ineffective immediately. One more question, please. Do we have your solemn word that if we succeed in keeping the peace for 27 days, Earth will be free of invasion. You have my word, Professor. 27 days. <laughs> you ask us to learn in 27 days what has escaped the world for thousands of years. You ask us to practice peace or die. The choice is not new, Professor. Only the weapons. Now, if you'll forgive me, time is short. Will you be kind enough to return to your seats? and you'll be sent back to Earth. Los Angeles, California.
What do you think, Tina? Could I do Frankenstein? Mm, a little, little too groovy. Oh, is that it? Yeah. You got to be a little stiffer. Stiffer. Yes. Because he's a corpse and I'm not. That's why. And he's got a flat head. <laughs> so I said, yeah, yeah. He's got my haircut. What we do you think? We could put a book on it. Oh, yeah. You, you know, I would like to do the whole book thing where they teach you proper Wouldn't that be interesting? Toys. Did you ever go to finishing school? I went to Cotillion. What's this? Where at like 12 years old, all the boys and girls, the boys in suits and the girls in little dresses with gloves, and you learned how to oh, how dance nice. properly. Yes. And, you know, do. And this is called. So it's what? etiquette. It was, it was cotillion in those days. Cotillion. But I have taught etiquette. I've actually taught and ballroom dancing to, to my students. Oh, how wonderful. Because it is a lost art. Oh, it is? No. Yes, it is. It's no, we need, we need more proper behavior as we well. We do. I, I think the world would be a better place because it'd be more civilized, it, would it not? It, the civility is gone. That's right. No, we're going to bring it back. Good. You and me. All right. We're going to work on this. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are watching the 27th Ooh. day with the wonderful Tina Cole from My Three Sons and the King... King family, the King Cousins. The, the King Cousins, yes. Yeah. This is a musical troupe. Yes. And you guys sang. We did. What's the most famous song you sung? You mean... of Anybody's? Oh my goodness. Yes. We sang everybody's. We did every genre ever except rap. <laughs> that wasn't invented no, yet. No, that's right. You were before your time, right? Oh, yeah. did rap back then. Yeah, yeah, no, no good. rap. Right. But we did a little of everything. What do you think of this film? Um, I think it's very interesting. It, well, it's different. See, it's it, different than yeah, the normal stuff. It show. is. It is. No, no. It is. Now, I'm Tom dying to me, find out what. You know what they're up to. Oh, uh, we're, we're going to find out I soon. I want to know what the aliens Tom are up to. Tom was telling me that the spacecraft was used in Earth versus the Flying Saucers as well, and in an episode of the Twilight Zone. Oh, seriously? Yeah, huh? Hollywood is always reusing their props. When I played, when I played uh, before I was Katie on My Three Sons, I played a girlfriend, Joanne. Right. And I wore my own dress, a green dress with white cuffs and collar. Well, I wore that as Katie <laughs> when I joined as Katie. Right. And I didn't realize it. Neither did anyone on the show. So there was no wardrobe that said here, that put said, this hey, on? That said, hey, this was my own. And, and my fans said, uh, <clears throat> this is when Facebook, you know, this is like right. uh, when social media came out. Why is Joanne wearing the same dress that Katie is? So what was, you know, the, we recycle what everything. was the time difference between the two roles? Oh, oh, it was in another state. It was another city. It was, and two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a testament to you that you still fit <laughs> that costume, that, that wardrobe. God. Thank you. In two years. So that, no, that's fine. <laughs> Tell your fans I knew I to liked take you. that. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like? I mean, was it like grueling work every day, showing up under those hot lights? It was a job. Right. It was a job, and it was very interesting because of the way we shot around Fred McMurray all the time. Right. And so there were days when we would do bits and pieces of maybe four or five different scripts. Right. So we had no idea when people say, oh, do you remember that episode when you did this? And no, I have no don't. recollection because it was all pieced together. Right. And if we didn't see it in the first run on television, you only had one chance to see it, and that was the rerun in the summertime. You know who tells the same story? Hmm. And you know him, John Provost. Oh, exactly, well, yeah. He always tells the same story. He never knew as a child, as he was a child too, he's filming all these different pieces of different episodes, and it was all Because big... of the way they had to shoot, a, a, right. especially for the children. And yeah. the locations too. It's oh, like, sure. all right, we've got three scenes coming up in five episodes for this. <laughs> Location, let's shoot them all now. Oh, yeah. The funny one was when I was pregnant with the triplets, and I had. It and was you a, were not actually pregnant? I was not. Your character? Yes, my Katie was pregnant, and, and usually up to that point, women just put a pillow around their waist. Right. And, and our producer wanted me to look pregnant, so he had a whole bodysuit made for me. And they padded, every month they'd pad a little more padding with oh, lamb's wool cool. and foam on the wow. bust and the belly. Right. And I had these three, like the three bears, you know, mama bear, papa bear, baby bear. 
hanging in my dressing room. Every time you'd open up the door, these bellies would be hanging out. My goodness. And one, sh one day I had to shoot nine months pregnant, already having had the children, not even pregnant, just dating or just getting married. I mean, it was all in one day. My goodness. Crazy. Are you pulling these things in and out? No. What a mess. All right, what do you say we get back to this movie? <laughs> love it. And when we come back, I want to look at your new book. I would You've got, just love got a new book. to. Wonderful new book. Thank All right, you. off we go back to the 27th day, 1957, and we will see you on the other side of the break. See you soon. Professor, we have to hurry to catch the plane. Yes, of course. You fired that shot? Yes, sir. What happened? I thought I saw something. You saw something? Uh, I guess I was mistaken. City room, Clark. Mr. Jonathan Clark? Yes? Just a moment, Mr. Clark. I have a paid call for you from Cornwall, England. Cornwall, England. All right, I'll take the call. Your party is on the line. Go ahead, please. Mr. Clark? Yeah? Mr. Jonathan Clark? That's right. This is Eve Wingate. Do you remember me? Why, uh, of course I do. Oh, how did you know where to find me? Well, I remembered you said you were working, and so I took a chance in telephoning you. Look, I'm going to come to California. Now, be sensible, Miss Wingate. Stay where you are. Look, I can't. I've, I've, I've made it reservations on the midnight train from London, and, and I'm coming anyway. I'm leaving tonight. Now, wait a minute. I can't talk now. Steak sandwich, medium rare. Yes, sir. Hey, Joe, fix the television, will you? And nothing but trouble. This is an announcement of the most vital importance. 
Sure it is. All television, radio, and telephone communications throughout the world have been interrupted so that this transmission can be made. People of Earth, I am an alien from outer space. What's he selling? Flying saucers? 36 hours ago, five members of the human race were transported from Earth to the space vessel from which I'm speaking. Each of them has since been returned to Earth, bearing with them information of concern to every human being on your planet. These five people are Evelyn Wingate of Cornwall, England, Professor Klaus Bechner of Germany, Su Tan of the province of Kunming, China, Jonathan Clark of Los Angeles, California, and Private Ivan Godovsky, a soldier from behind the Iron Curtain. Private Godofsky. Good evening. This is Ward Mason. Word just in confirms that the strange broadcast that has startled the world has been heard throughout the Iron Curtain and the satellite countries. As to the question, was it real? The answer must now be held to be yes. Insofar as can now be determined, the alien, whoever or whatever he is, effectively managed to blanket every facet of the Earth's communication facilities for the ten minutes in which he had his say. This has been confirmed by the FCC. The FCC's officials privately admit they are now convinced that the alien spoke from a point somewhere beyond and outside of the Earth's atmosphere. One thing is uppermost in the minds of the millions of people who saw and heard the alien. Where are the five people whose names he kept repeating? Who do they know? What do they know? Meanwhile, here in this country, the search for Jonathan Clark has been intensified. Clark, a newspaper man, disappeared from a downtown Los Angeles restaurant during the Aliens broadcast and is assumed to be in hiding. Police set target for Jonathan Clark. Boy, extra. Extra. Martians threatened. Extra. Police looking for Jonathan Clark. Extra. Don't say anything. I thought you'd never make it. Neither did I. How'd you find me? I didn't dare. Why are you? I kept watching the planes all morning. Come on, let's go. Martians threatened. Extra. Where to, Mac? Hollywood. Does this thing work? Yes. Heaven's name's that? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Music, almost. What's the matter? You look different. I'm disguised. Oh, you shaved off your mustache. The best I can do under the circumstances. What are we going to do? I wish I knew. Since one o'clock this afternoon, I've been public enemy number one. Are you sure we're right in running? Till I've had time to think, yes. Where do we run to? Where do we hide? We couldn't get out of Los Angeles even if we tried. Three minutes after my disappearance, they had this whole town locked up. Where do I? I think I know a place. It's crazy, but it might work.
My goodness, it's coming down like cats and dogs. It's, it's, yes. We're having some rain out here, in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, it's, you know, I, what I like about the rain is it makes things wet. It's like the plants like to be wet. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You know, I'm not used to having this bloke standing here doing mail time. Yeah, typically living, I figured he'd be back with my new shoes. Not yet? Well, maybe he's doing other things. Oh, lunch. That's possible. In any case, uh, welcome back to the show. Miss Tina stepped away for a moment so we could do some mail because uh, she won't share a chair. Yeah, you're tiny. You could like sit on the arm of the chair with her and she claims that chair is hers and I, it's my chair. I decide who gets to sit in it. In any case, uh, we're going to do some mail. What do you got for us, Mr. Andrew? like one from Texas. Texas? It's a postcard with Texas. It says the Lone Star State. Why do they call it that? It's got one star. Oh, it's only got one star. If you look up in the sky, you only see one star. According All to right? that. I don't know. All right. Well, I see lots of star cities here. In any case, uh, this is from Julie Castro, or Julie Castero. No, Julie Castro. And she goes, Dear Vincent, Mr. Livingston, and the beautiful and mischievous Tangella, that she is, mischievous, I don't know about the other stuff. I promised Tangella when I was at East Bay Comic Con that I would send a postcard from Texas. Thank you for all the selfies and autograph pictures. I was so excited to meet all of you. So in case you don't know, we did a convention called East Bay Comic Con in Concord, California. That was back in uh, February, was it not? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we were there and we did photos. You know, when we when we do conventions, we don't really sell things. We just do photos with our friends and, and have fun. I, mean, I, I don't want to sit at a table and sell things. You know, Superman does that. But I'm not Superman, so I won't do it. Uh, let's see. She goes, uh, it was great seeing you in person. I used to watch on Coffee TV 20, but now watch you on YouTube since moving to Texas from California. I hope you can attend more conventions. I love your show. Thanks for all the great fun. A forever fan, Julie Castro. Well, thank you so much, Julie, and we hope things are going well in Texas. She does not say where in Texas she's from. Maybe, maybe she's in all these cities. I don't know. What else you got? A blue one. A blue one. All right, this is from Beverly Dancy. Oh, that's a nice name. Dancy. It's like fancy, but it's dancy. Maybe she dances. Yeah. I don't know. But Beverly, I wonder if people call her Bev. Bev Mirage. I don't know. Dear Creature Feature Crew, I'm reaching out to you from the spooky little state of Rhode Island, home of the Conjuring House, the original Vampire Law, the Dark Shadows Mansion, and the famous Ghost Hunters crew. Ever since I discovered your show on Roku and YouTube, I just can't stop watching. I suffer from insomnia, and the movies you show remind me so much of my youth. You know, lots of people with insomnia watch our program so they, they could sleep. It's true. I mean, if I'm t tired and I cannot sleep, I will watch our show and I'll fall asleep quickly. Uh, I love watching the old actors in their prime in plots that didn't twist your brain into knots. I find the host stylish in his rocker black leather. She's talking about me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not wearing much leather. It's just a tiny little piece of leather right there. So all the leather is on my shoe and on the collar. That's it. And Tangella to be a ball of devilish fun. You know, I can talk about how much actual fun she is. She's, she's trouble. So if you like trouble, I suppose... That's good. Be careful with her. She's within striking range. I know. I would love to see her face off against that spooky lady in blue behind you. Yeah, you know, she's actually friends with the ghost. She's the only one that ever sees her anymore. So uh, that won't be happening for a while, but one of the other ghosts, maybe. And don't get me started on that haughty Mr. Livingston. So regal, so handsome. You know, it's a good thing he's not here. His nose would be going vertically upwards and his head would just go boom. yes uh wishing you continued success and now i'm a patreon well thank you so much for your support beverly and thank you so much for writing to us she didn't say where she's from oh rhode island yes so hope things are well in rhode island Is that it no we've got a giant card uh, we've got a big one cardboard letter 
A cardboard letter. Do you think somebody just writes large and that's why they did this? Oh, possible. All right, this is from Richard Kaiser. We've heard from Richard before. It's a unique name. Warren, Rhode Island. The other one was from Rhode Island, right? The blue is from Rhode Island. I wonder if it got mm -hmm. planned that way. Maybe the mail comes in waves. Yeah, you can have this back. And what have we got here? Oh, I see something nice here. All right, I know where we're going with this one. Oh, how nice. All right, so it's a wonderful painting created by Richard. Let me hold this up. Look at this. Look. Guess who? And, you know, he, he, he modeled this from our Friday show because I recall one Friday show, you were in the Bob Wilkins chair. That's actually Bob Wilkins' chair, you know. It's not like a fake rocking chair with a skull. Here, you take this. I'm sure she'll place that in a place of honor. And he goes, hi, Tangela, Vincent and Livingston, or Andrew. I'm inserting that myself. I know you're not too crazy about getting more than one correspondence from the same viewer, but I felt inspired to do one more portrait of Tangella. Now, we don't mind multiples people writing. No, it's, it's nice sometimes. Because, you know, we'll ask them on the air, oh, how are you? Thank you. And they write us back and they tell us how they are, right? So it's, a, it's all right. But don't, don't send us 20 letters. It'll be like, what's this head? And send us a letter every day. Mm. That's too much. All right. I felt uh, inspired to do one more portrait of Tangella. This watercolor is of a Tangella in Bob Wilkins' chair. When I saw Tangella in the chair, I just had to paint her. The other painting of Tangella was shown on the episode with the oblong box. I recall that one. I think that's uh, up, up in here somewhere. Hope you like the painting and keep up the great show, especially the black and white horror. Thanks, Richard Kaiser. Well, thank you so much, Richard. And we appreciate your wonderful work. Send us more. But if you do one of me, make me look pretty. Not like I look now. In any case, uh, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us mail of your own, simply go to hellocreaturefeatures.com and you can get our email address or you can get our physical mailing address so that uh, if you want to send a painting like Richard, you have a method of doing so. We'll be uh, right back after the next segment of the movie. And uh, in the meantime, I think uh, Andrew's going to die. There's no real danger, Mr. Ancombe. There's a slight concussion, but he'll be able to talk in a few days. That long? I'll have to inform the president. Excuse me, Professor Carl Newhouse to see you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me? Uh, nurse. Uh... How are you, Carl? Sorry to drag you away from your project. How's the professor? Recovering. Have you been able to talk to him? Not yet. Look, we found this on the professor. That's why we called you, and we'd very much like to know what it is. Is it anything you've ever seen before? No. Can you open it? I don't know. If we're to believe this fantastic story of a spaceship, we must assume there are four more of those, including one behind the Iron Curtain. Send him in. Come forward, Private Godowski. You have been honored, Private Godowski, the first member of our country to visit space. I understand you were a little confused when Colonel Gregor found you. He had the peculiar impression that you were running away. The broadcast said that you were taken aboard the spaceship 36 hours ago. Yes, sir. How is it that you did not come to us at once? I was afraid no one would believe me, sir. I understand that these people from space gave you some very important information. Yes, sir. I'm waiting. They just gave me that box. It's very interesting. What are the capsules for? Uh, I don't know, sir. You don't know? Not exactly, sir. We were given these boxes. All of you? The alien gave you this without telling you what it was for? It 
He said just they contained the secret of great power. Did he tell you how to use this great power? No, sir. I see. I suppose you were not told how to uh, open the box. No, sir. Were you told anything? Just that if I were to die, whatever was in the box would be of no value. That's fascinating. Your story must be recorded for everybody to know, Private. You will be happy to repeat it at greater length, will you not? Yes, sir. You're dismissed. You heard? Yes, sir. You know what to do? Yes, sir. A race track. It's the last place on earth I would have thought of coming to. That's the general idea. You sure nobody will know we're about? Well, not even the horses are here out of season. Are you okay? Come on, let's go. Just two. They have regular rounds, but we can avoid them. You're awfully well informed, aren't you? I used to cover the track for my paper. I spent a lot of that time and my money here. Come on, let's go. Welcome to Shangri-La, our home for the next 25 days. Crazy, isn't it? I just can't believe it. You're lucky the horses aren't here. Hey, blankets, humankind. Which floor would madam prefer, the upstairs or downstairs? Look, before we really settle down, I think we'd better start by rearranging the furniture, don't you? One duplex coming up. Cocktails, anyone? You forced me. Cheers. Good luck. Say, that's good. Where'd you learn to fix such a good martini? It was easy. You forgot the vermouth. <laughs> you ready for dinner? Peanut butter and what? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. I'm going to bed. Yeah, me too. Why don't you take your drink and go and look at the moonlight? Women. Oh, Jonathan. Why don't you just call me John? All right, John. 
I trust you're a sound sleeper. I don't want my sleep if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I meant. around every hour on the hour. I'd almost forgotten we were hiding. I know what you mean. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, Tina Cole, this film looks like an episode of The Twilight Zone. It's just, it does, and the music, too. It's got the look and feel. It does. Right, right. Yeah, especially with those, those when it goes, the big ball of, of white. The, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely Twilight yeah. zone -y. And then you tell me your favorite scene oh, in this. Oh, favorite scene. No, I think it's hysterical. Okay, he gets in the car, and he, and he, he, he turns on the radio. Right. He's got the, 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 with the gal, the, the English woman. Right. And there's this, like, this big band music comes on. And she says, oh, what's that? And he said, rock and roll. It and it's rock big and roll, band it? going on and bum, 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 bum. You know, I figured that that was rock just their roll? version of rock and roll. Right? Yeah, yeah. Bro. Yeah. You know, because adults didn't know rock and roll. Oh, that's what it was. He yes. was just guessing. It was pretty, but it it was just big band music, right? With a swing beat. And Did he they says, call oh, it rock big band roll? back then? Did they actually call it big band back then? I don't know. Because it seemed like all music back all then was big band, right? It was. So to, to call something big band, that's interesting. What in God's name is on my lap? Is my I've been, my life's work there? Look at this beauty <laughs> on the front. <laughs> You know, do, do you remember her? I remember. I her. remember. This is this is amazing because <laughs> this this looks like a contemporary movie star. Really? No, this looks this photo looks like it was taken a week ago. And I, you know, I, I told know you, it's you, I knew, and I, I know you. this is the way you look before, but the, you look like somebody like modern, like you could be like you could have your own sitcom right now. Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't that be lovely. Tina Cole, My Three Lives, a memoir. <laughs> you had to play on that. And do you this notice is, that the logo, the three, is the same logo from the... It is. No, it's exactly the same. Yeah, I, I snuck it's that It's a in silly there. font. A yes. silly font. So let me, let me see this here. You've got, oh my goodness, 340, <laughs> 50. 352, but that includes recipes. 352 pages. You felt you had to add recipes because there was not enough content in this tome. Well, it's, I love to cook. And All I right. and I've created a lot of the recipes. There, there right. are only a few, but most there's the illustrations. Ones that are in there, my mother drew that. Mm -hmm. No, there's illustrations. There's photos. Lots there, of photos. Wait, is there folks. a price on this? Pardon? There's no price. Typically, when somebody brings me a book, oh, I, can I know see there's a price. A, yeah. No, I like this. I don't think they should put numbers on mm -mm. a book because Amazon will sell it. At a different price, you know, it'll go on sale at Amazon, and what's a thirty-dollar book will now be twenty. Are you 20. saying that one has to go all the way to the Amazon to purchase this book? Amazon would be good if they want an autograph. You want an well, autograph copy? Who needs to go, you go to, to a my jungle? Facebook page? Who needs to go to a jungle to buy a book? <laughs> well, they love me in the Amazon. Yeah, well, I'd be afraid to get speared. Or, oh, or snakes. Right. I wouldn't like snakes. No, Amazon, there's, there's <laughs> large snakes in the Amazon. Oh, yes, and those mm. horrible fishies. But it's in bookstores too as well, right? No, it's online, at Barnes & Noble online. Oh, Barnes & Noble, uh, I know this place. Our publisher, Bear Manor, 
and Bad you can get Nana. it in a lot of libraries are getting it now. Oh, I have nice. a wonderful review from the so library journal. So you can read it for journal. free if you have a library card. <laughs> yes. But no, I think you should buy the book because it's a nice book. I cannot tell you the price because it's not on the book. But it's a gorgeous book. Thank now, you. What percentage of this is my three sons and what percentage is your singing life and what percentage is oh. your afterlife? I, well, m my second life is my career. Right. The main part of my, so that includes uh, Hawaiian Eye, which was my first series. Right. And then my three sons and the King family and right. the King cousins. But it's, it's woven, it's hard when it's, it's chronological and things crossed. You know, it's, it's, right. so you, yes. everything. No, and, and my and three sons was like a very well-known thing you did, but that was in hindsight, a short period in your entire career in yeah. life, right? You know, it's it, it, funny. There was a time when I was doing My Three Sons, The King Cousins, The King Family, game shows, talk shows. Oh I was on seven days a week on somebody's that is show. Insane. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that crazy? No, crazy for you. Did yeah, you go mad? It was mad? so much fun. I loved every minute of it. So, so when, did, when did the craziness stop for you? Um, probably around maybe 79. 79. Yeah, I love the 70s. 79. I love the 70s. You know, oh, the 70, the 70s I don't never be wonderful. a decade like the 70s again. I know. You know, because the 60s were crazy and the 80s were like sort of mellow and the 70s was just. Yeah, exciting. It was the perfect combination of the two decades. Yeah, and I together. love the 70s music. Right. I oh, loved, it was, it was happy, it was nice. happy music. The Carpenters. Mm -hmm. There'll never be another set of Carpenters. I mean, we know we have actual Carpenters that <laughs> right. work with wood, but there will never be oh, another that voice set of, of Carpenters. Her voice. Right, yeah, she was the best. All right, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to the oh, film, good. but when we come back, we're going to talk some more about and this And remember book. that, remember the, the rock and roll. You gotta, rock yeah. and roll. It is, big band is not rock and roll. <laughs> no. And vice versa. All right, we will see you uh, on the other side of the break, I think, right? I don't know. Bye. Miss Wingert was seen hurling a small object into the sea. Her gentleman friend, Harry Bellows, who witnessed the incident, reported that the girl appeared highly distraught. The populations of Rockhurst Cove and other coastal communities are being evacuated on the assumption that the object might very well have been a mine. The plus large speculations have been made on both sides of the Le Quai d'Orsay a annoncé qu'il n'y avait aucune raison d'inquiétude dans la région Normande et Bretonne. Late reports from England confirm that there has been sporadic rioting. British government sources indicate they believe the Wingate girl might have been acting under the alien's orders. Miss Wingate is believed to be hiding with Jonathan Clark, who has been missing several days. The British have assumed that the object in question was a weapon, and the London press is actively speculating that all five of the alien's visitors may be acting under orders to place the alleged weapons in strategic positions. All we have to do is get rid of our capsules, huh? But such panic. What do you expect? Reason? Discipline? Restraint? Those people out there, I feel sorry for them. Well, I do. They're bound with fear. They're frightened, every one of them. Ever since the alien came into their lives, they've been waiting, waiting for they don't know what. Those characters you're feeling sorry for are so full of hate they'd lynch us if they could get their hands on us. I know. I've forgotten how easily hate comes alive. People hate because they fear, and they fear anything they don't understand, which is almost everything. You're not terribly fond of people, are you? Right now, I can take them or leave them. John. I'm still listening. I wish there was some way we could find out what's happening to the others. Are you starting that again? Just wish we knew. Well, we don't. We can't. Let's hope we won't. We who are supposed to have the finest scientific minds in the world cannot open one small box. Sir, it resists every test known to modern science. You have heard the news from our English friends. They believe it is a weapon. No indication that the capsule. I are. am indicating the danger of other nations discovering the answer before we do. I trust this danger is obvious. 
We shall continue our efforts. Thank you, gentlemen. Well? Nothing, sir. You think he's lying? No. He's not clever enough to have thought up a story as incredible as the one he tells. And there is something he's not telling us. Exactly. But we've been over the story a hundred times. It's taken tremendous courage for him to go on like this. Even torture cannot break him. He must be broken. He insists the contents of the box will be useless if he dies. He's right. The Chinese girl. The capsules disintegrated with her death. You must find a way to make Godofsky talk. Yes, sir. Oh, and Gregor. Yes, sir. How difficult do you think it would be to get to Bechner? I'll find out, sir. You liar. You filthy, traitorous liar. It was a weapon, and you pretended that you didn't know. Look, America revealed space box weapon. American warmongers are screaming that knowledge of the alien weapon makes them undisputed rulers of the world. Ivan Kodovsky, who refused his country information which might have protected it against the American threats, will go down as the greatest traitor this country has ever known. You must tell me the truth. Tell me the truth, Ivan! What is it? Shock. You've pushed him too far. How long? There's no way of telling. Professor, I wonder if you fully understand the concern that has gripped the world. It is because of that concern that I must withhold my information. The White House feels that you should give us some idea of the alien's mission. Don't you see that by remaining silent, you create even more apprehension? I see it, Mr. Ingram. But unfortunately, there is nothing I can do about it. I have no choice but to trust your judgment, Professor. However, there are a few questions I must ask. I hope you'll at least try to answer them. I will, if I can. Does the alien in any way constitute a menace to our society? I have already said that their ethic does not permit them to harm any form of intelligent life. Is this box, or its contents, dangerous to our security? The box and the contents cannot in themselves be harmful to anyone. You must realize, Professor, that there is at least one, and probably two, of these boxes behind the Iron Curtain. Yes, yes. Dr. Newhouse. We have given the box every test we can think of, without success. It can't even be scratched, let alone opened. We keep on trying, but my personal opinion is we get nowhere. What is your opinion, Professor? I am sure that if the world's foremost atomic scientist has been unsuccessful, there is no physical force which will be more effective than those already tried. However... Yes? Mr. Ingram, the capsules are a mystery to me, too. But I have a feeling about them, something that the aliens said, and that I can't quite isolate, if you'd only permit me to examine them. Under the circumstances, Professor, that's out of the question. I'm sure you understand. Yes. Thank you, Professor. Goodbye, Carl. Professor, I do hope when all this is over, we will have an opportunity to talk. I'd be most grateful for your views on several ideas of mine. And I, Doctor, would like to have your views on almost everything. Thank you. You did say, didn't you, that there was no physical force capable of opening the box? 
I did, but mind you, doctor, it's only an old man's opinion. Goodbye, professor. Time for your medicine, professor. Mm. Ah, chocolate. Hey, this is Red from Dayton, Ohio. I just discovered your show on YouTube. I think it's awesome. It's 10 times better and more entertaining than Spinguli. So I'll find more episodes and watch more. And if I can catch you on live TV, I'll do the same. Peace out, man. Thanks a lot. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Can you imagine having this kind of power to create havoc on the other side of the globe? What I can't imagine, well, no, I can't imagine because people do it all the time. <laughs> I would like a miniaturized version where I could just not like get rid of a whole country, but I could say, oh, get rid of him. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? Make him go away. Yes. That would be nice. That would be very nice. I think, I think they could sell quite a few of those. But why, why is it in these kinds of movies that it, the aliens are always bad? They're always going to take over Earth. They're going to... You know... So we're terrified of the aliens and what they could do That's an interesting point, because Every, that switched. Mm -hmm. That switched. Didn't like it? With, like with E.T. and yes. with... Uh, As Close, Close Encounters. Encounters. Right, right. So it did switch a bit. Uh, did you ever see the film Starman? Loved it. Wasn't that a wonderful film? I loved that movie. That was a wonderful film. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one I've tried to get. We cannot get it yet because... Oh, it's... Ooh, someday. Someday we'll get it. Uh, but no, wonderful film, and that's uh, that's one of the bridges. It's Jeff which, Bridges. Jeff Bridges. And, and then, uh, um, what's her name? Uh, she like was Indiana Jones' first girlfriend. Karen? I want to say I don't know. Yeah. Karen Allen. Is Karen that, Allen. Is that her? Yes, but yeah. um, who was the the alien? Um, that's Jeff Bridges. Oh, Starman. I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking of? You're thinking of uh, what's his head? The singer. Uh, uh, who was music? The Music Man. Star, uh, Ziggy Stardust is no. who you think. Who, who who played the Music Man in big Broadway guy? Robert Preston. Robert Preston. Robert, you thought it was he, Robert Preston? Yeah, was I'm thinking of a whole other movie, but I love Starman. But there's another one. Oh, a kid I want to see on a video one. game, and and he the alien the aliens come and it's and it's, oh, okay. No, that's the last he, star. The last starfighter. Fighter, right, right. Love yeah, those two that movies. Those were yeah, great no, movies. And they came out Be about the same time. Because they were positive right. about that there is right. life somewhere else and they're, yeah. they're good. They're no, not it's, all it's, bad it's after like, us. It's like the Star Trek shows. They were all like fairly positive and then recently they've all gone dull. <laughs> it's just so sad. Everything's I gone watch dark. It no, anyways. So when's the next book coming out? Oh! oh. I'll have this one read by the weekend. <laughs> I... I have trouble writing a grocery list. Oh. You know, so this, this was a was big pro a project, I can see. You well, put a lot of work into this. I did. I did. I wanted it, I wanted my voice. So uh, there would be times where I would spend like an hour working on one sentence because it just didn't Oh, I feel the right. same way. But you know what really bothers me? There's some typos in there. Oh. And I don't right. I'm tell I'm admitting it right now so you don't have to write me. No, there's nothing wrong with that. And you no, know, that's but it, that's your publisher's well, problem, it, not yours. Well, he promised that with the next printing, which right. is going to be in a couple no, months, your publisher they're going to correct all of those. So right. don't write me about it because I'm very aware of it. Right, right. But so uh, this, but the, this the voice book? is mine. It is my only book. Your first and only book. Yes. That's incredible. No, it's uh, if I were to write a first book, it would be like this thing. It'd be like, right, I played music by. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that'd be but it. that's why it's three lives because it covers all three. Right. You know, er eras of all my three life. Stages. Well, I, I expect that you're going to have another book the same size because uh, you've got a long ways to go, right? Yes, I do. See? All right. And we've got a long way to go in this movie, so let's get back <laughs> oh, to it, shall quick. we? All right, off we go. 27th day, and uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll chat some more, right? Yes. Hopefully. All right, see you soon. What time is it? Quarter of 11. Planning on going somewhere? No. I just wondered if we couldn't get some news. We haven't heard anything about Professor Beckner for two days. If he'd have told him anything, we'd have heard. How long are we going to stay here, just hiding like hunted animals? Look, I'm no boy scout doing this for kicks. You don't think I like hiding, do you? The funny thing, here I am, a newspaper man, sitting on the best story of my life, and I can't do anything about it. Then why do we stay here? Maybe for the first time in my life, I think enough about the next guy to do the right thing by him. Maybe you're wrong. Why don't you just keep doing what you're doing and don't try to judge me? I'm not interested in your opinion. Well, I have a right to them. But I don't think you do. As far as I'm concerned, you lost your rights when you threw those capsules away. I'm sorry. Men commit a variety of crimes, and they always seem to have the same excuse. We've been here 10 days, and we've managed to disagree on every one of them. It's normal. Take two strangers, put them in close quarters, have them clean, cook, talk. Actually, we've had all the disadvantages of marriage without any of the advantages. Jonathan, stop. But it's true. It's time I went to bed. Sleep well. Determined soldier? What do you mean? I mean, if you had an objective to take, were you always successful? Uh-huh. That's nice. What did you say? I said good night. I'm Dr. Stephen Meisner. Dr. Hawkins and I have been asked to examine Professor Beckner. Sorry, Doctor, we've got orders known as Professor Beckner. I think this will supersede any previous orders. This is Kelly. Give me a check on license New York 5F9836. Well, I guess I can't argue with this. Go ahead, Doctor. Thank you. Stephen Meisner. Meisner. Meisner's home in bed. Come on. I do not have it. I tell you, they took it away from me. The box, Professor. I don't even know where the box is. You must believe me. You two all right? 
Yes, but who were they? I think we could both make a pretty good guess. Beckner was unharmed and is resting comfortably. The official bulletin said merely that two unidentified men were shot and killed last night in an attempt on Professor Beckner's life. But it is widely assumed that the two would-be assassins were foreign agents attempting to recover the mysterious box believed to have been given Beckner while on the alien spaceship. Jonathan Clark still goes on without success. The federal authorities are repeating their warnings. People are not to take the law into their own hands. In the past 48 hours, one man answering the description of Jonathan Clark has already been killed. Remember, Clark is only in contempt for refusal to obey a congressional summons to surrender to the authorities. You're no more to blame for the panic in the world than any of the rest of us. We all avoided our responsibility by running away from it. Do you think maybe a man could be so pig-headed wrong he can't see the truth even when it's spelled out for him? I wouldn't have much respect for a man who wasn't pig-headed when he was sure he was right. A man like that could be dangerous. Maybe. When the alien first gave us these capsules, I thought the whole thing was preposterous. It seemed pretty obvious that all we had to do was to keep them hidden until the 27 days were up. Well, even the Chinese girl and Ivan would have seen that. It was all too easy. It would have been all right if the alien hadn't made the broadcast. Yeah, but he did. And now we're being hunted like animals. They tried to kill Professor Beckner, and I hate to think what may be happening to Ivan and the Chinese girl. Do you think if Ivan talks, his government would use the weapon? They might. They've been racing to see who could discover the most powerful weapon of war. Compared to this, the hydrogen bomb is a toy. Now, both nations have the ultimate weapon. I tried to stay out of it by hiding. Are you thinking of giving yourself up? I don't know what to think anymore. If I come in on my own accord, I might be able to stop some of the panic. I thought you told me that the world was built on self-preservation, that the most important thing in life was to look out for number one. A lot of my convictions have begun to wear pretty thin the last few days. For instance, I had a very strong conviction that there wasn't a woman alive who could make me fall in love. What did you say? It's a miserable way to find out, isn't it? It's a miserable way to say it. Maybe someday I can say it better. You're sure it isn't just all this? I'm sure. There's so little time. Only a few days. Maybe even less. I know. You know, it's not going to be so easy to give ourselves up. We just can't walk out of town and say, here we are. What about the guard? No. When we give ourselves up, I want a lot of authority around. Come on.
Good morning. I'm Jonathan Clark. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Are those mentos? Can I have one? Thank you. Mmm. Mmm, yes. That was sweet of you. Uh-oh. <coughs> mind will clear for a time to administer pentothal after only five days you can question him sir but you understand his condition Ivan there is no need to be frightened I know now you wanted only to protect us from the horrors of war is that not so? Yet you have failed. The imperialist nations have pooled the aliens' weapons. We find ourselves defenseless unless you can help us, Ivan. You and you alone can save your people from destruction. Your father gave his life in the defense of his country. I have here a letter from your mother. She wants you to ensure that your father's life was not given in vain. Help us, Ivan. If you should have a relapse, we would be at the mercy of our enemies. I'll tell you everything. Just sit here and do nothing now that we know that Ivan has put the weapon in the hands of his government? Are you proposing that we use ours? That would be the first step in fulfilling the alien's plan. The alien, all this nonsense about their high morality. Why, well, it's double talk. They give us a weapon and they expect us to use it. And yet they give the impression that they hope we won't. Morality. But well, they're so full of morals and loving kindness. How come they just happen to have 15 nice, shiny human exterminators lying around? I don't think you are being fair to the alien. Fair? They could have simply used their capsules and taken our planet. Jonathan, imagine what we must look like in their eyes. Since the first men hit one another with clubs, the human race has spent more time destroying itself than in any other endeavor. But the aliens have not tried to judge us. They have merely intensified our choice. A choice that has faced us since the first atomic bomb. Now, with them, it's not so much a choice as it is an ultimatum. 
I think we are all missing a significant point. What's that, Professor? If we were a stable, mature people, this would be almost nothing. The alien would have presented us with the capsules, and we, upon returning to Earth, would have promptly tossed them into the nearest sewer. Or the nearest ocean. Instead, we returned to Earth terrified. Why? Because we knew that the human race could not be trusted to handle these bombs any more than an undisciplined child could be trusted with a high-powered rifle. That still doesn't help us to know what to do. If only they'd let me work on the capsules. But they are even afraid of me. You have an idea? I do not pretend to know how the capsules operate. But if only I could get my hands on one of them, perhaps... Perhaps what? It's just a feeling that I know something. Or I ought to know it. Would you come with me, please? We're wanted at the Pentagon. Our government is seriously concerned that other powers have succeeded where we have failed. We were hoping, now that there seems to be no further need for concealment, that one of you might enlighten us. Amazing. You said it couldn't open. No physical force on Earth could have opened this particular box. Only my mental projection. By the same token, no one but Ivan Godovsky could have opened his box. They are keyed to the electrical impulses of their possessors. Well, then their story is true. It is true. Agreed. But what about their claim? that their capsules have destructive powers within a radius of 1,500 miles. Three capsules, then, will be able to destroy every vestige of human life on the North American continent, from Panama to Hudson Bay. Can anyone believe that? Believe that such energy is contained in a cylinder smaller than the cup of my fountain pen? A cylinder that will understand instructions like a robot? I cannot. Then why should the alien give them to us in the first place? What better way to start a war here on Earth than to place these boxes in our hands? And let us believe they will do everything the alien says they will. If you are right, Dr. Newhouse, it's almost too clever. The only way we can check the truth of the alien's words is to test one of the bombs. And, of course, that's out of the question. I'm not so sure. There is an area of more than 3,000 miles diameter off the east coast of South America. The test could be conducted at sea. You forget, Admiral, this test requires a human life. We cannot put a human being within the area when we have every reason to believe that his life might be the price of our mistake. Gentlemen, much of our concern may be unnecessary. Remember, there are still 12 days. If I could have the capsules long enough to examine them, study them thoroughly, perhaps there is another way. That decision I cannot make. However, I suggest we adjourn for the present. You will be notified of a future meeting. Will you? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you missed the entire program. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you because it's it's like you've missed Tina Cole. We, you've I missed us not. talking about a book. You've missed most of the film. I, I you think don't want to miss this film. They should switch over to just like Saturday Night Live or something. <laughs> Maybe they can catch the last few skits of that show. No, please stay. We'll, we'll take anybody, late or not. That's right. We don't have enough people watching our show. So it, it's nice to have even the late ones come in. True. Right, right. So uh, anyways, we are with Tina Cole, the wonderful Tina Cole, who played, what was your character's name? Katie. Katie <laughs> on My Three Sons. And uh, she was not one of the sons. She was, no. uh, I suppose, the only I could, daughter. I could identify as. Right, no, no, no. But no, we won't go there. You were <laughs> the daughter-in-law to Fred McMurray. I was. And he was a wonderful man. He was uh, very kind. He was very um, shy. Shy. Very shy. That's something uh, you don't and hear too kind often of introverted. With an you know, as someone would walk on the set, he, the newspaper would go up. And not because he was stuck up or didn't want to talk, he just didn't know what to say. Oh my goodness. But he'd get on the set, you know, as his character and was hysterical. He could say more with the lift of one eyebrow than some actors could do with their whole faces. My goodness. But he was a he was a, a, a lovely man. I right. lo he and his wife June were were very dear they to seem, me. You, know, you could tell this with people sometimes with actors, even though they're like doing a part, you could just tell the person inside is is nice and that was quite clear with him. You were telling me during the break that you met Keith Richards. Oh. <laughs> I want to hear this story. Oh. I don't know that you do, but, that's, but I'll give it to you. Oh, I've got my own Keith yeah, Richards story, oh, but I want to tell no, you, I was, want to hear yours. Well, it was their first, it was uh, Stone's first appearance, I, I, well, at least in California, right. on the Hollywood Palace. And, I mean, I, I had hung out with the Beatles, you know, and, and here are these, these, they were very clean, even though we talked about the long hair, they were very clean and neat and nice, you know, and... and these the stones were just grungy, smelly. Um, I mean, their clothes reeked. They reeked. You know, it's just. And after you, you so we we have rehearsal and break, and then um, then you know everybody go to dinner. Well, the the costumer went into the dressing room and he took their clothes and quickly took them to the dry cleaners and had them all oh clean. Goodness. And so when they got back from dinner, you know, the dressing room had been sprayed and all their clothes were nice and shiny and they had a fit. And they said, you, that's our image. You can't do that. That's, oh they goodness. were so angry. But it was an odd combination. The And Dean Martin was the host. My and he, if anybody could see this YouTube, it's gotta be on YouTube somewhere. He he we were on and then he was introducing the stones the king king right. sisters and cousins and he standing in the middle of his arms around us and he said well next act is something about how uh, the stones and boy are they stoned and, uh, and he starts oh, rolling his eyes and he said we won't see them very long oh, you wow. know and i mean it's embarrassing when right. you think about right. how long you know oh, they've that's been performing that's but incredible. it was it was the Stones and the King family and Bertha and Tina the Elephants. Oh my goodness. It was quite, How and so fun. when Keith, I was reading Keith's autobiography and he talks about the Hollywood Palace, how, you know, it was a, it, they didn't like right. doing that show. Right. And he talks about the Buffonted Kings and Tina and Bertha. That's how they described you? <laughs> we were the Buffonted Kings. Oh my goodness. But we got in his book. I think that was quite That's true. lovely. Yeah, no, a mention even by Keith. Keith. By Keith. Yeah. By Keith. <laughs> All right, what do you say we wrap up this movie? Let's do it. And then uh, we're going to find out what you're doing next. Okay. All right, off we go to the end of the 27th day. When the credits begin to roll, they are the credits for the movie. They are not the credits for this program. So that means you should stay. Because Please. not only will Tina and I be wondering where you went, but we'll have Tangela here wondering where you went as well. So you, you don't, don't want, want to, to upset her. No, no, you don't. Disappoint her, no. That would be terrible. All right, we'll see you soon. I am prepared to destroy all life on the North American continent 
if the Americans do not withdraw from Europe and Asia and confine themselves to continental United States. Sir, this will mean a war that could finish us as well as them. There will be no war, Marshal. If I launch these three capsules, they will not have one single person left alive to give orders and none to carry them out. Where is your war then, Marshal? But if they strike first... The lessons of history have been wasted on you, Marshal. Democracies are appeasers. And the Americans in particular cannot be provoked into a war. They must be bombed into it. They will do something, sir. Of course, they will threaten and bluster and make angry speeches. And they will end doing just as we ask. I shall read to you the ultimatum, which has already been delivered to the United States. Demand is hereby made for the immediate withdrawal of all American forces and civilians on land, sea, and air to within the limits of continental United States. On pain of total war. Such withdrawal is to begin within 48 hours of the moment this document is placed in the hands of the government of the United States. This is not their people speaking. It is one man. Well, we can't accept it. If we pull everything back home, we've piled our potential where he can destroy us with a single blow. If we can start the evacuation within the time limit, seeming to be complying with their demands, they might not use the weapons until it's too late. But what about my suggestion? If the boxes do not actually contain weapons, we are giving up the world for nothing. If you would only permit me to examine the capsules, I have an idea that... I'm sorry, Professor. Approval has been given to your suggestion, Admiral, and the test site. Most of the equipment is readily available. If we flew out of here tonight, we could start the test by the day after tomorrow. We still have the problem of a test subject. So as not to alarm the public, the test must be conducted in absolute secrecy. For this reason, and even more compelling moral ones, we cannot use condemned criminals or even ask for volunteers. I must admit to being... Gentlemen... I am your test subject. As soon as I heard of the ultimatum, I subjected myself to a fatal overdose of gamma radiation. You can check my statement with a radiation counter if you wish. But Dr. Newhouse... I realized that you would not accept me if I volunteered, so decided to place you in a position where you could not refuse. You see, although I'm born in Germany, I reside in Missouri. I have to be shown. Carl. The forfeiture of a life such as yours. I'm not at all sure the test will be successful. But if it is, then what is one life against millions? Stop all engines. Aye, aye, sir. All engines stop, sir. Hi. Ship's on station, Admiral. Thank you, Captain. Now, this is the limit of the radiation radius. Dr. Newhouse is here, just within the limit. Our position is here, one mile outside the radius. Sir, he's coming through. So it's time. It won't open. I know what it is, Jonathan. I do not really want the box to open. Radiation poisoning is a pretty terrible way to die.
I can't. I, I can't do it. Latitude 71 degrees, 25 minutes, 13 seconds south. Longitude 150 degrees, 14 minutes, 18 seconds east. Tonight, tonight, the 27 days will be over. They've almost won. Nothing. Or we are on the verge of annihilation. If you were to launch the bombs against someone, when would you do it? At the last possible moment, so that your enemies have no chance of striking back. Exactly. It is my firm conviction that unless something happens to prevent it, the weapons behind the Iron Curtain will be launched. It is a question of life or death. No. Not life or death. Life and death. What do you mean? I think I have the answer. What is it, Klaus? Jonathan, I must have your capsules. What for? I need a complete set. There is some message on them. It's in a mathematical code. Jonathan, you simply must let me have yours. Klaus, I don't think I can do that. But you must. Don't you understand? The alien has put some kind of message on them. I think I know what it may be, but I cannot be sure without the third. Please have the box brought here and then decide. Admiral, will you please have the capsule sent here? Captain? You see, the etchings, I transferred them to clay. I made reliefs from the two that were left, but the message is incomplete. And these hieroglyphics really mean something to you? They are mathematical symbols, some of which I have never encountered before. But in mathematics, there is always a solution. Eventually, I am sure I will be able to decipher them. Jonathan, there are only five hours left. And now I must be left alone. Please. Clark, I hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, I hope so, too. Newhouse is death, the spaceship, the alien. Two weeks of housekeeping in attack room. I know. Now this aimless cruising about in the middle of nowhere while the world goes to pieces. It all seems so hopeless. 
It's supposed to have a purpose. If Ivan were to launch his capsules and we were all in Washington, there'd be no way of striking back. Maybe there's a kind of weird justice in all this. What do you mean? Maybe the heavens have had enough of us. Maybe they've decided we don't deserve what we've got. Maybe, maybe people really aren't worth saving. I don't know. There are a lot of nice ones around. Everything is prepared. Our troops will move the moment the third capsule is released. Soon the world will be ours. Twenty-nine degrees, forty-five minutes, twenty-six seconds north. Longitude, ninety-five degrees, twenty-one minutes. You fools! Don't shoot! If he dies, the capsules are useless. Look after him! Latitude 45 degrees, 4 minutes, 23 seconds north. Listen. 12 minutes, 12 seconds east. Professor! Oh, stop! Professor Victor! Latch from the inside. Professor Victor! Professor! Latitude 55 degrees, 45 minutes, 18 seconds north. Longitude 37 degrees, 37 minutes, 14 seconds east. Answer me, Klaus. Where are they? I've launched them. I've blanketed the world. Then the capsules didn't work. Of course. If they had, we'd all be dead by now. I think they worked. I think they worked very well. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The bulletin we've been waiting for. Scientists believe we have been bombarded by invisible rays from outer space. Reports pouring in from all over the globe confirm sudden and unexplainable deaths. All the cases have shown the same symptoms. All heard a high-pitched, almost supersonic noise, accompanied by acute agony and severe shock, and followed by death. I know it's unbelievable, fantastic, but the rays appear to have killed every person throughout the world, known to have been a confirmed enemy of human freedom. Yes, the entire world is now united in a spiritual unity unparalleled in its history. 
There are those who might say it can't last. But let us pray it does. Thank God. Unlike you, Jonathan, I never believed that the alien was acting in bad faith. But what gave you the idea the capsules could be altered? Yesterday morning, in my excitement, I used the phrase life or death, remember? We both thought you'd gone a little crazy. Aboard the spaceship, the alien said, you hold in your hands the power of life and death. He might have meant that the capsules could bring us life as well as death. And on evidence like that, you launched the capsules? Yes. You see, almost every form of energy, fire, electricity, nuclear fission, has two diametrically opposed uses. As an asset for peace or a weapon of war, for good or for evil. The capsules followed the pattern. They had to. The alien was incapable of giving us a weapon only for destruction. I suppose we should be happy, but I can't help thinking what victory for us means in terms of the alien. Yes, I cannot imagine a greater tragedy. Not only for them, but for us. Why for us? We made contact with the stars. How many years may pass by before this can happen again? Think of all the knowledge they could give us if we could help them. But must we lose it? We have vast uninhabited areas, jungles, deserts, polar caps. We can't use them, but maybe they can. But there's no time. There are still eight days. Klaus, as long as this feeling lasts on Earth, there are no boundaries between nations. No fear, no suspicion. Perhaps, yes, perhaps it could be done. Admiral? Excuse me. Thank you, Captain. The Captain has orders to rendezvous with the carrier. You, Miss Wingate, Mr. Clark, will be flown back to Washington immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, I need not remind any of you that for the past 24 hours we have been broadcasting our invitation to the alien over all available wavelengths in the hope that every human being within reach of a radio receiver may hear his reply. If we succeed in contacting him, we have asked that he answer our invitation at midnight. As of five minutes ago, every radio and television broadcast went off the air to ensure clear reception. Since Professor Klaus Beckner has been almost the sole instrument in bringing us together here in complete harmony for the first time in history, it is only just that he should extend the final invitation. <laughs> Professor Klaus Beckner. Go ahead, Professor. People from space, this is Earth. The people of Earth calling. We offer you our hospitality and our sanctuary for as long as you may need it. We offer you trust and hope now and in the future. This invitation comes from every nation and every race on the planet Earth. If you hear us, we ask you to reply in 15 seconds. People of Earth, we accept your invitation. We come in gratitude and love. We bring you greetings from 30,000 intelligent worlds and to tell you they're waiting to greet you among the stars. Have you seen this hideous thing? It, it's really, it's scarier than the movie. Uh. Oh, oh. Oh, you poor thing, what she, happened? Yeah, I think she brings it out merely to shock our guests. I think so. Oh. No, most of the oh. week she does not have this, this hideous thing outside of her chambers. And, oh. Uh, she's got it. Oh. Yeah, that, that, uh, Anyways, uh, this movie, the ending, all the bad people are gone on the planet. Wiped out. Wiped out. I think it's, yeah. it was a happy ending. Not for the bad people. 
<laughs> no, I. What, what kind of world does not have bad people? Bad think, people make good people look good. But do you think good. it'll last very long? No, we'll think about it. <laughs> All right, if, if you have a world where only good things happen, mm -hmm. There's no such thing as good times, right? Because all times are good, therefore, without bad times, you don't have good times. It does not exist. Well, that is that, yes. You got to know the good to appreciate right. the, got to have the bad to appreciate the good. Precisely. Now, yes, if you that's true. eliminate all the bad people from the planet, and it's all good people, then I suppose some of the good people will become bad people because there'll be better good people than <laughs> lesser good people. Good point. Right? <laughs> Have you been mixing your own? She mixes her own dynamite, and it, it's a certain smell. Oh. It has a certain aroma on her hands. Let me see. Mm. Yep, she's oh. been mixing dynamite oh dear. again. Well, she, then maybe, she, no, we don't want to eliminate her. She comes no. across as so dainty, and she's got like a degree in chemistry. Oh. No, it's terrible. All right. Anyways, yes. fun movie. Maybe we'll show it again someday. Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But uh, as far as you go, another book soon? Uh, probably, well, no, no, you spent <laughs> my a lot son of time said, on this. my oldest son said, Mom, I you could do a whole book on all the times that you tried to kill us. <laughs> there you go. No, you should, you should turn into a fictional tale where you actually succeed. Oh, ooh. and then he could read, he could read how yeah. you know, his demise could I mean, could we have did been, have some pretty close calls <laughs> had you not been a wonderful mother. I was a wonderful I mother. Think, no, so no, no more books for a while. You need to Not take a for break. A while. What are you going to be doing? But like, I, what I'm doing right now, I'm doing the Audible version. Oh, nice. Yes, so that are will be out soon. Are you doing the whole soon. professional studio thing where you go in the no, studio? I do it in just, my home. I've got my own, own little setup. So I'm if, only on if we purchase four, this, we're going to hear your cat meowing in the background. <laughs> that's what I'm afraid and, of. And you know what? The washing machine running. <laughs> I've got a little clicker that oh. you know a tra that you train dogs with. Right. And when a, a sound or a plane dry, you know, flies over or something, I click and wait till it goes, and then I click it again and, and continue. So the editor then puts the two clicks oh. together. Brilliant. Huh? I could have used and that got on a my DSer. last album. They have a de-esser and they have a de-clicker. I'm a clacker. Oh, there's lots of right. yes. smacks. And they, there's a program that de Clacks and oh no! I've done DS's. sound mixing. I know all about. Yeah, all this. I, oh, it's very exciting. I have a I have a plug in that can make you sound like Mickey Mouse. I love that. Now imagine if you read this book in <laughs> the voice of Mickey Mouse. That would be very interesting. I can interesting. do that for you. We'll, we can trade numbers. We'll, all we'll, right. we'll talk about it. All right. Well, <laughs> your book. We go to. You said she cleared that up. It's Amazon.com. Right? Yes. Not the, you do not have to go oh, to no, the actual Amazon. Oh, no, don't go to the Amazon. jungle. Don't, you don't need a pith helmet. You do not have to go to the actual Amazon to purchase this book. You can go to Amazon.com. Barnes Tina and Noble. Cole, My Three Lives, and look for this wonderful lady on the front. This is the you, same woman. And if you want an autographed copy, you can go to my Facebook page. Oh, tell me this. What and I will, and I will autograph a book specifically for you. Of course you will, but how do they find your Facebook page? Tina Cole. <laughs> just look just, up Tina Cole on Facebook. And this is a personal page? Or is it, it, no, it's my professional page. Professional page, all right. Mm -hmm. so you find and there's Tina a store Cole on there, Facebook. and you click on the store, and you can order the hardback or the soft. I recommend the hardback because, you know, it could be used in hand to hand combat if you necessary. You could do that on your head, remember? And put right. it on your head. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. All right, thank you so much for love. Next time you're in town, you come see us, we'll have tea. Love it. All right? All right. See you next time. And as far as you guys go, thank you so much for staying up and watching our program. We know you could have been like out building something. They could have been out building like a, a shed. How about a boat? Something. A boat. They could have been building a boat, but instead you stayed here and you watched this silly movie and this wonderful guest with us. And we appreciate you doing that. And uh, next week uh, we're going to have a different guest and a different movie. I don't know who, don't know what, but don't forget, we love you. See you next time. Bye. So, uh, Tina. Yes. You know, I was skimming through this book mm -hmm. and I could not find one mention of creature features. Oh, it must have been one of those typos I was talking about.